I'm Naoko Takano, and I work for uh, WordPress Automatic. And I'm going to talk about why mature open source projects needs our culture of mentorship. Um, first, uh, so I am an open source project manager. I'm in this role for about um, about over two years. But uh, before then, I was a localization manager for WordPress.com, which is a blogging service uh, run by my company, Automatic, which is based on the open source version of WordPress, of course. And before that, I was a uh, support. And before that, I was a freelance web designer. And I studied fine, fine art in school, college. And I, I wanted to become a um, graphic artist, but now I'm here. Um, I now work on the Five for the Future program, which is the um, initiative to encourage contribution from user companies. So for ours, it's uh, hosting agencies, product companies, uh, such as plugins and themes. Um, and you can visit the initiative on wordpress.org slash five. So um, the topic is why mature uh, open source needs uh, uh, mentorship culture. Uh, WordPress has been around for 20 years and as spoken in the keynote this morning, maybe you already know why um, you know mentorship culture and mentorship is necessary for the open source uh, project to, to be sustainable and um, you know thrive for years. Um, so at Automatic, we're a little bit unique in a sense we use WordPress so much <laughs> because one of the biggest uh, business at Automatic is WordPress.com, which is the uh, source version of WordPress. So we are kind of a hosting company in a sense, which is only you, where you can only use WordPress, uh, but we are hosting WordPress. And 5% of Automatic employees, which is about 100 people out of 2,000, are working full time as a uh, for full-time OSS contributors. And I'm uh, part of this um, program's contributor experience team. Uh, I'm a part of team of two, and we are working on this Five for the Future initiative, and others are on, of course, CMS itself, software, and infrastructure, events, uh, devrels, design, uh, and uh, management leadership such as, and then that's about 100 people. So, um, so that's WordPress. But, uh, so we, we've been around for 20 years and we are facing uh, new challenges these years. So Linux has been around, you know, 30 years. We may be kind of getting to the, you know, following the same similar path, but um, maybe we have unique challenges because our users don't always, um, are not always uh, tech savvy. They might not even know how to write an HTML. Uh, they might only, you know, access WordPress dashboard from their uh, smartphone. They might not even own a laptop. So we have very diverse uh, user base. Um, so they might be artists, you know, uh, shop owners, uh, people like that are using WordPress and we want to embrace that and uh, scale with them because we really need to understand them and work with them to um, be used by people like that. So WordPress contributor community has 22 teams, um, including core, design, mobile accessibility, polyglot uh, translation support, events, testing, uh, you name it, we have it. And there are tens of thousands of contributors working in you know, any of the um, team, sometimes multiple teams. And they are, I'm sure we cover almost all uh, countries, but active contributors are about in 50 countries. And uh, like I said, that they are diverse profile people, not necessarily programmers. Uh, they might be just hobbyists, bloggers, and designers, and then also of course people who are, uh, you know, excited about all things open source and coding and grading. So we have very diverse uh, profiles of people, 
And when we look into core contributors, which is the WordPress software itself, we call it core, and we have plugins, which is the functionality added to the uh, main uh, software and theme is kind of design part of it, uh, template. So core is just the maybe like kernel uh, WordPress. Uh, each release, we usually have two or three releases a year. Uh, five to 800 contributors uh, are involved. They may only have one, you know, prop, but we count them, and it ranges about five to 800 contributors. And there are 30 core committers, um, you know, in a variable range of activities, and hundreds of companies contribute. And besides that, there are, of course, um, document writers and translators. They are not counted in that. Uh, five to eight hundred. There are people who were, who received props, I would say. And this is the stats. So this is about two years, over two years. We've released 5.7 to 3.6.3, which is the latest. And uh, the dog report is the brand new people who has registered and had the first prop in that release. So we have a pretty good range, about 30%, uh, give or take, uh, first time contributors. Uh, but, um, so I think Linux was about 50, so they may be fixing one thing or two that they wanted to fix. Um, so we can say, you know, we are welcoming good number of people each release. But what this shows is, okay, 6.1 is little bit unique because it was, I think it was a COVID, uh, you know, bump. So ignoring that, you know, I would say it's kind of, you know, it's increased, but we don't know next what next uh, release will look like. It's hard to say we are steadily increasing the number of uh, contributors who are sticking around for the second time. So that's the, that's the biggest problem. We, we notice people are excited. They want to get started. They do get started, but we're lacking the system to, you know, have them stick around. Uh, for example, this is actually translation contributor stats. Um, the little sliver, which is orange yellowish part, is the people percentage of people who became promoted this year uh, who are who has been in the uh, contribution um, I guess profile or user over one year so I would say those uh, dark blue part maybe they are uh, people who join to you know join a new language team so maybe there's nobody doing it so they become uh, what we call translation editors, it's like a maintainer, maintainers for translation. So I, I would say it's not as significant as those people who are promoted, who's been active and became maintainers of translators. We are not seeing that uh, generational switch. Uh, I'm also to be blamed, I'm a translator for Japanese. We've been struggling to kind of pass, passing the button to the next generation. 20 years, same people, maybe 10 or 15 years, many of the language uh, teams, which is also communities, they haven't been uh, active in uh, mentoring next generation. So we all, maybe you all heard of pass factor. So what if, you know, some of these like, people who are not um, uh, passing the information knowledge practices to the next generation, maybe this whole community might disappear in, let's say, France, you know, there are five people, uh, I can say <laughs> for sure, but, you know, handful of people who know how things work are, you know, maybe they quit, maybe they get old, <laughs> maybe they, you know, have life and they can't do anymore and maybe they disappear. And what happens to that community and what happens to that area of, um, uh, you know, uh, contribution, it, it's not sustained. So in 2014, which is already nine years ago, uh, our uh, project co-founder, Matt Malingwood, said that uh, it's a good rule of thumb to, uh, for the, us to scale is 
all the companies who benefit from WordPress would contribute 5% of their resources to the project itself. So this was first time it was raised, you know, we have to work towards something together. Uh, it can't be just automatic or just handful of uh, companies creating this. We need to do it together and let's do it. Uh, so that was just a call for action. And then this site was created five years, uh, I mean, five years after that, because it, there's been some talks about, you know, okay, we need to contribute, we should contribute. And there, you know, people are starting to uh, change their mind about uh, being part of the WordPress itself, not just the, you know, plugins and themes and all the uh, components of, of product, uh, project that are benefiting themselves. So Five for the Future program was initiated in 2019. And what we had was this website and uh, mechanisms for companies to pledge, which is saying like, hey, we're gonna give 40 hours to the uh, project. You can you know, have my employees work on anything WordPress. And we had a pretty good number of uh, companies committed to uh, say that. Uh, you know, but then COVID happened and things kind of stag stagnated for years. But then, uh, for example, Bluehost is one of the uh, hosts that has many WordPress users. They have these, uh, you know, six people contributing 49 hours per week across six teams. And, you know, we've been having these uh, very active co-contributors uh, create WordPress and they believe that is uh, benefiting their, their business. So they're like, doing that for full time. So we have these companies and active and they each get this profile, this is mine. Uh, you have, you know, like your profile page and these badges for, you know, contributing to the team and you have this uh, activity streams. So you can check, you know, who's actually active. But right now it's really hard to say if, you know, people are making impact for activities or contribution or not. So that's the next challenge that we're going to face, but we have that. So uh, with those companies and uh, individual profiles, we have uh, been able to somewhat um, learn about company, company pledge effectiveness. So right now we have about 200 companies uh, pledging to uh, say that their, their employees can work during their uh, paid hours towards WordPress. And about 50% of the companies are making high impact while 60% 60, 60 has uh, become inactive. So we also have this, you know, excited uh, raising hands uh, companies and a gap between, you know, them getting actually uh, active and staying active. So people just struggle to level up. They can get started. That's not a problem. Uh, at the same time, experienced contributors, they don't know anything uh, they, they, they're not sure how to make the situation better. They work hard and they burn out and they have more responsibilities because they're the only one who knows how to do certain things. Um, we need to change that and we need to be sustainable, uh, which is, you know, we need to grow with a, a better plan, not just work hard and uh, guilt tripping people to, you know, contribute. Uh, because that itself doesn't work. And we need to change our mind to say mentorship is a high priority task for us to work on. Uh, we need to, of course, work on something in front of you, but at the same time, uh, you know, creating this sustainable project is also our high priority. We need to keep saying that and, you know, creating this culture. And we need a repeatable framework for nurturing impact for contributors for each team. So yeah, we need, you know, we, we don't have a lot of things, but we identified uh, what we need and we are clear about that right now. 
Uh, this is Josefa, our executive direct director. Uh, just this year in August, she said, uh, she said, asked this question, how can we make sure what best just outlasts any of us? So when we die, our co-founder dies, you know, years, 20 years, 100 years, how can we make sure WordPress is still around? We are very serious about this and uh, we need to create a system for that, uh, for the, you know, our children to survive, our, you know, this children of uh, our work to survive. So slowly but repeatedly bringing up the topic of the to uh, in the community to develop the mind shift, culture shift. Uh, we kept talking about um, mentorship and with, you know, different bumps, COVID and getting busy and other priority coming up. We kept going for, you know, nine years, I guess now, but we are getting really serious now after um, this uh, hired us, we've realized this is now uh, one of the highest priority for the community to focus on the future. So uh, next we need to, you know, take an action. I love this uh, resource. You can see it, see the link in uh, my presentation that's linked for my uh, talk. Uh, There's a great open source re uh, report about uh, mentorship done by uh, Linux Foundation. Um, you know, it's just really great resource, so I recommend it. <laughs> um, so we need to get out of this uh, vicious cycle of, you know, over committing. We see a lot of uh, contributors do this. They are excited, they can do it, they are happy to do it, and then they overcommit and burn out and get tired and disengaged and they leave but we need to balance their commitment with some shift to uh, mentorship effort so that the growth uh, happens within themselves and then also the mentees so they can grow together and the engagement is sustained and the community expands. So this happens um, sometimes accidentally. I think it has happened to many people but we just don't have a good system to make sure that is repeated over and over. So that's where we are. So we've, we've had different initiatives besides Five for the Future. And the first one is like community team had event mentors all the time. This started like 2015 and Corey squad mentorship happened 2019. And in 2023, these um, two last two are happening. And I'm going to talk mostly about contributor mentorship program, which is our project right now. So this happened uh, around August, uh, around the WordPress six point release. So we had, uh, we called it a pilot cohort. So we we're kind of testing the water. And over four weeks, uh, 13 pairs of mentors and mentees were uh, matched uh, based on their needs and experience. And they engage in activities such as self-directed courses. We have this um, self-directed courses that's on learnwordpress.org. And they took you know, open source basics, how to communicate within open source or WordPress uh, um, you know, project. And they did that. And then they had mentees, uh, mentor, mentors check in about their needs, what they want to do next. So this is very like, uh, customized for each person because we thought you know that's that's the best way to you know get people started they they, they have a tailored um, program or you know mentors to help them out and they engaged in um, you know training team core team uh, polyglots and core several different uh, variety of teams depending on the men mentees need and we had an onboarding workshop for different teams and some of them contributed to each team. So this wasn't uh, based on projects. It's more about getting people onboarded into team and helping them find things to do and uh, answer questions, things like that. Oops. Okay. And, and they also shadowed the release cycle, which was uh, happening around the time of the uh, this pirate cohort. And this is just kind of a chart for 
what happened, you know, they get matched and they take courses and they get feedback. So this was, uh, we would say this was successful because uh, we would say, you know, some of the, the um, mentees are still very active and they went to, you know, uh, become actually one of the, um, uh, the uh, mentees was from Spain and he was, uh, he wanted to be like uh, reactivate his community and then also there's a core, there's some people who receive force props in the core and they learned how, you know, how things work. So they are excited to try it out in the next release. So uh, it depends on the mentee or, you know, their ability, but we, we would say we saw some success, but we are still kind of learning the process. So this is um, my finding based on program builders perspective. So it's not for mentors or mentees, but from my perspective. Um, so these are four that I learned based on the prior project. So program creation takes resources. We've been talking how mentorship is important for years, but not many things happened because we didn't prioritize, we didn't put resource. And I was put into this uh, role um, this this year and my teammate, he started last year and then, you know, things started working. I'm sure, you know, other companies could, you know, put more people and we could like, you know, uh, speed it up, but you can't do things on the side. It's really hard. It's you know, maybe it could happen, but it could, it could be very, very slow. So, um, you know, if you're interested in actually making it happen, <laughs> make sure uh, resources, uh, you know, people have this as their focus. You know, they don't have to be sponsored or they don't have to be working as a, you know, a sponsored contributor, but make sure someone is looking at this as their, you know, their project, they, they own it. Um, as it happens to me, I'm also trying to make it happen for my own community in Japan, but since it's not my focus at work, I kind of put it aside and it's not happening. So um, it's kind of my learning also. <laughs> so, uh, and availability is crucial for mentor and mentee. And this is, uh, this also depends on, you know, individuals, but we need to make sure that uh, we pick right timing and right, um, you know, match for community because uh, when mentors are, bu mentors are busy or mentees are busy, you know, things don't work out very well. So pick your timing if you're doing a cohort, which is a, you know, time and group based, um, you know, this work learning process. But then if you're doing the right before release or, you know, during holiday in Europe, maybe it doesn't work. So make sure you pick a time that's, uh, that everybody can really focus on things and, you know, even for four weeks. And currently helps mentors and mentees. Uh, we just got started and the first round, we got a lot of feedback about, we're not sure like what's happening and when, and, you know, things are sometimes confusing, even though we wrote a lot of documentation, it wasn't cl clear enough to communicate. So uh, even program itself is perfectly designed. If it's not communicated well, um, people get confused and they don't follow uh, the process. So uh, this is a good reminder. And over time, I noticed that awareness encourages mentorship. So this is not just about this program itself, but um, I'm noticing it when, whenever I notice this uh, opportunity for men mentorship, um, I tend to find match between mentor and mentee, or I act as a mentor. And it happens if you start kind of noticing things. So when, you know, people say, if you have something in mind, uh, you start noticing that in, in the world, you know, if you're pregnant, you see like K 
kids toys and things that you knew you didn't know that existed before so if you have mentorship mindset you'll start noticing the opportunities and um, what uh, what you can do in a small steps even within the community to encourage this uh, culture so next steps for us we are thinking about cohort number two, which is going to be uh, happening soon because uh, WordPress, um, WordPress is uh, releasing new uh, 6.4 next year already. And uh, as I said, uh, the schedule needs to be super clear. So we need to uh, develop the schedule beforehand and share it in a Google Calendar and so we don't just dump all the documentation text in one batch so people uh, get notification and such and we need more documentation re resources uh, of course we all uh, have handbooks for each team which should explain how to get involved but at the same time maybe they're not always uh, findable or maybe we are still missing some part for brand new people um, so we need to work on that uh, and we, we're going to do that before uh, getting started with the cohort and replicable program for teams this is kind of vague but uh, we are thinking about maybe using uh, some kind of notification or automation using github to uh, create this program itself cohort itself so that let's say this team wants to run their own mentorship program um, such as training team is doing that right now so maybe they can reuse that uh, source to you know just dump in people <laughs> and then uh, the managers can follow the steps that's existing so we, we're so far away from that but if you, anybody has any good ideas about that or um, some samples that you you've noticed uh, I'd love, love to hear that and all the future uh, announcement about our um, mentorship program in the future is going to be posted in this uh, WordPress community team handbook so we don't have the announcement for the cohort number two yet but it will be posted in there once it's published so um, I would say you can start the mentorship culture also uh, I got involved uh, through just an accidental uh, you know I was a user and I became kind of involved uh, by starting to you know answer questions and uh, translate text and then I got mentored by many people who helped me uh, to come here so if you can find uh, some find someone who needs help getting started or going to next level uh, I would say just reach out and help them out and you can see the benefit on your on your side as a mentor and talk about mentorship and build up the uh, culture and keep it going so if you have any mentorships or sustainable contributor community topics you want to talk about I'd be happy to uh, meet you so I'm a little early but uh, uh, I'm opening up for questions thank you oh and <laughs> sorry and we have a work camp Asia happening in Taipei uh, in March 7th to 9th so if you um, I notice many people from you know different part of the world uh, if you want to meet the international and Asian WordPress community uh, we have really cool guests coming up announced being announced soon so if you're around uh, please come see us in Taipei in March thank you any questions Hey, thank you for a great talk. It was awesome. Um, 
I was wondering, you know, what were some of the things that you were showing during the uh, workshops and other self-directed courses that you spoke about? Were they more just introductory things for people that are looking for a good first issues or was it more about how to use WordPress or something like that? Uh, it wasn't about how to use and I can show you the self-directed course. Uh, we have uh, this uh, platform called Warm Learn WordPress, mm -hmm. and we have some uh, open source or the contribution uh, related contents. So we kind of reused it since it's already here. It yeah. wasn't uh, made for this uh, mentorship uh, program, but it worked very well. So for example, we have uh, like con this is one of this could be like uh, similar to workshop this is onboarding for uh, community team mm -hmm. and uh, before that they went to maybe something like introduction to contributing wordpress and finding your team so uh, it wasn't about how even though learn wordpress has how to use wordpress yeah. content yeah we have contribution content and uh, yeah, we want to build more, and then also we want to write uh, mentor uh, training courses too. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So how many, this is my, my last question, because I'm sure someone else has some others. Um, how many people did you start out with with your first cohort, and how many are you aspiring to get for your second? So yeah, this first cohort was 13 pairs, so 13 mentees, so it's very small. Mm -hmm. So listening to you know all the talk, we're still kind of getting started. And the next one, we uh, tried to expand to double. So yeah, about 25 maybe. So it's still small scale since we only have a few people who are managing. Yeah, so, gotta start somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, best of luck, thank you so much. Thank you. And which uh, community are you from? Oh, uh, ByteDance open source. Okay, cool. Yeah, so. Thank you. Any other questions? And if you know any students or anybody who wants to get started with the open source, even though they don't have any kind of any you know training skill, we're welcome. You can they can organize events. They can be just friendly people. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your talks and. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, confused, uh, so uh, I want to clarify my understanding. So, uh, you explained about the mentorship program, and so uh, what? But the, the title is a mentorship culture. Mm -hmm. So, what what is the difference between the uh, the mentorship culture and also what? the what does the mentorship training co uh, do for the culture hmm. oh. okay thank you yes i need more clarity <laughs> so uh when i talk about uh mentorship culture um so as i said like wordpress community wasn't aware of the need for mentorship process i guess we we're not still there at 100 percent that we realize this is needed that's why uh, we still don't have a good you know uh, generation switch like i showed so the culture itself is not just about the program uh, it's just uh, uh, the program is a way to you know realize the culture but what i'm saying about the culture is the realization for community members or project uh, members to think about the future think about the sustainability sustainability in a sense of project sustainability so which is something people overlook because you only focused on like this year next release but when we talk about 30 years from now or you know 100 years from now that's what when we need to realize this culture is necessary all the time yeah i hope it's helpful uh, thank, th thank you so for so <laughs> mm. so then the, what what do you do for the growing the such a culture mm -hmm. uh, so the mentorship program mm -hmm. 
itself also uh, training the uh, <laughs> uh, cultivating the the such a uh, the mental set. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it correct? Yeah. So we have uh, the mentorship program I talked about is the third line, mm -hmm. and we have had a uh, mentorship attempt in the past, and mm -hmm. you know we we already. Um, here and there, we um, had mentorship to, you know, uh, kind of train the next generation of people to do things that are being done. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, right now, I think so. I need to talk about a little bit about the relationship about uh, the Five for the Future and this mentorship program. This was partially designed to get these uh, Five to Five for the Future. Uh, pledged company to be active, you know, maybe I, I wasn't explaining that enough. So we have people who want to contribute, mm -hmm. but they're not getting active enough. So we want to set a system where people who want to become active can become active mm -hmm. through the help of mentorship or mm -hmm. some kind of a better training system. <laughs> so that's, that's the current, uh -huh. yeah, situation. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you for thank you for question. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Any other questions? No? <laughs> okay, we, we are good. Okay, so yeah, thank you for listening and uh, please talk to me after and uh, looking forward to meeting you. Thank you.